marvelous. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'd like to welcome you to Let's Play No More Heroes. Normally I would just go on to do my uh, intro spiel, but if I just sit here on this screen long enough, it will go to a uh, demo video. So instead of that, let's just stand on the balcony. Choose difficulty. Sweet. Perfect for beginners. I am led to believe that the normal difficulty is not the one it defaults to. It is, in fact... Mild. Many strong men await you. So we're just going to stand here on the balcony. Anyway, this game came out in 2007, and it's a third-person action-adventure game that was once exclusive to the Nintendo Wii. Uh, actually, I think that's the only thing it has in common with the previous game I Let's Played. <laughs> uh, but yes! No More Heroes has a bit of a reputation for being really, really weird. Just to say it plainly. And, uh, that's generally attributed to the fact that the director of the game was the, uh, lovably eccentric, let's say, Japanese developer Goichi Suda, who prefers to be credited by the name Suda51. I have played one of his games in the past... And I absolutely believe that it's going to be real weird. But I also believe it's going to be a good time. Before we jump in, though, there are a few things I would like to mention. Starting with the fact that I'm going to be doing this long play style, which is to say, I will be using minimal editing in order to bring you guys more or less my entire experience with this game, from the developer logos to the credit roll. You know, so get ready for exciting things like travel time, menus, and loading screens. <laughs> I'd also like to mention that this is going to be a blind LP. I did step into the very first area in order to get a reading on the frame rate and audio levels. But other than that, everything we're about to see is going to be new to me. I'm going to play the game for the first time ever, and you guys get to come along for the ride. Here's hoping we all enjoy ourselves. And, of course, I would like to give a very special shout-out to the user identified as a period. So thank you, my mysterious friend. Sincerely. I didn't play this game back in the day, and I always kind of felt like I, I missed out, you know? No More Heroes doesn't have the biggest fan base out there, but I don't think I've ever met anyone who played this game that didn't love it. So, uh... I'm really glad to have a chance to uh, finally check it out after all these years. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, period. I hope you enjoy this series, because it's dedicated to you. Now without further ado, since we've already selected a difficulty level, let's play No More Heroes. I know a lot of gamers out there don't have much patience. At least that's what Bishop the dude at the video store said. So I'm at the register and then I realize I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? Because I met this smoking hot chick last night at the deathmatch bar. Man, she smelled good. So being the gentleman I am, I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decided to get a job. The gig? assassinate the drifter so I went where I was supposed to and waited for the guy to show up and there he was this cat well-dressed cool couldn't tell if he was the shit or just plain old shit yeah so he's styling fast aggressive and packing heat bada bing or at least it was supposed to be till she showed up her name Sylvia Crystal 
an agent with this Whatchamacallit Association. Congratulations, you are certified as the 11th best hitman. How about getting rid of the 10 killers above you and aim for the top? I want to be number one. How's that? Short and simple enough for you? It's going to be a long, hard road. But who knows? Could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What do you say, bro? Join me. Let's see how far we can take this. And for you there holding the controller right now, just press the A button. Let the bloodshed begin. You're really in for it. Fuckhead! That's one hell of a way to make an entrance. Yo, help me out here. Where's this death metal dude? Bad answer. It's game time. Yep. <laughs> what the? Beam katana. Press the Y or X button to swing the beam katana. Use the beam katana to attack enemies. Pardon me a moment while I go through this bizarre menu and uh, go check the options. Okay, um... That's funny, the opening cutscene seemed really, really loud, but now the volume is back on the settings I chose. Maybe it doesn't apply to the uh, pre-rendered cutscenes. Oh well, let's kill this guy. Once an enemy's life runs out, you will go into death blow mode. Move the right stick in the direction shown by the arrow on the screen. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess that this was originally a waggle control. Succeed and you will strike a finishing blow to the enemy. A successful death blow will cause the slots at the bottom of the screen to spin. If the slots line up, you'll be able to unleash various special attacks. You're a <laughs> I can honestly say that is the first time I've seen that much blood come from tilting the right stick down. The gauge on the right side of the screen is the beam katana's battery power. I do not see one. Every attack made, or each attack made of the beam katana, rather, will drain some of its battery. You will not be able to use the beam katana once its batteries run out. Now recharge your beam katana. What, am I going to go plug it in? Okay, I did see this. Yeah, I went through the, uh, the tutorial extensive as it is. I think I remember this from back in the day. I watched some people play this on videos, and one of the only things I clearly remember is this. Press the left bumper to go into charge mode. Oh yeah, it's on zero now. Move the right stick as fast as you can to recharge the beam katana. Move the right stick and totally recharge the beam katana. So all I'm doing is tilting the stick left and right, but if I remember correctly, when you were playing this on the Wii, and you'll now see why this is the only thing I really recommend from all that time, I really remember, rather, from all that time ago, uh, on the Wii version, you would take the Wii mote and make a jacking off motion with it as fast as you could. <laughs> Even the animation looked like jacking off. Yep. Locking on and blocking. Press the left trigger to, uh, to lock on. That's not what they call that, the LT button. Locking on allows you to move around in relation to that enemy. If you are attacked while locked on, you will block the attack. On sweet difficulty, you will auto-block when standing still. Try blocking an enemy attack. Yeah! Emergency evade. Hold the left trigger and move the right stick left, right, or down to perform an emergency evade. Enemy attacks cannot hit you during an emergency evade. Use the right stick to perform an emergency evade. Oh, I didn't even actually have to dodge an attack. 
Weapon Clash. If Travis's sword attack and an enemy attack hit each other, a weapon clash will occur. I can't believe they actually managed to find a way to make this a mechanic, this thing that always happens in, like, lightsaber duels. Win a weapon clash and you will enter death blow mode. Attack with a slash attack. This is a weapon clash. Turn the right stick around. Go, go, go! Yeah! Win a weapon clash and you will enter death blow mode. Move the right stick in the direction shown by the arrow on the screen. Yeah. Off with his head! Down attack. Y button will appear when close to a downed enemy. Press the X, or the Y or X button to perform a down attack. Perform a down attack on an enemy. Pretty sure that's the same animation that played and I hit X when I was uh, testing. The beam katana can be switched between high and low attacks. Use high attacks to hit enemies guarding low. Press the Y button to perform a high slash. Attack by using high slashes. Hey, Alright. So if I drain his health completely, will he not die until I do the thing? We'll test it out. Oh yeah! He just uh, uh, keeps fighting until I do the thing. That's really good to know. Slicing high and low. Travis can adopt a low slashing stance. Swing the beam katana with X button to perform a low slash. Some enemies will guard Travis's beam katana attacks. Use low attacks to hit enemies guarding high. Attack by using low slashes. Mediocre! Oh, two pieces. I really wish they wouldn't ask every time. Uh, I mean, I understand, because it's really long, but come on, man. Beat attacks. Attack in time with the music. No, uh, press the B or A button to perform a beat attack. Beat attacks will break an enemy's guard. B or A, okay. Beat attacks also have high and low versions. The high beat attack can be formed with the B button, and the low beat attack can be formed with the A button. That makes sense. Hit an enemy hi guarding high with a high beat attack to stun them. That's different. In the same way, hit an enemy guarding low with a low beat attack to stun them. Hit a guarding enemy with a beat attack to stun them. I guess that's an objective as opposed to just repeating things unnecessarily. I like the uh, the velvet ropes on the staircase to keep me in here. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, hi as in hi, not hi as in hello. Huh. This enemy is now stunned. A stunned enemy is totally defenseless. You can then follow up with a beam katana attack. Wipe out the remaining enemies. Throws. First, stun an enemy. Once an enemy is stunned, press the B or A button to grab them. Grab the enemy. I actually hit A, but it still worked. When you successfully grab an enemy, two arrows will be displayed at the screen like this. I guess you use the Wiimote and the Nunchuck for this. The right arrow is the direction you must move the right stick to. The left arrow is the direction you must move the left stick to. I mean, I gathered that, but thank you for explaining it anyway. I can see some people not picking up on that. Move both simultaneously in the displayed directions. Throw an enemy. Nice! The fucking suplex over here. I didn't even kill him, though. Okay, fine. I wanted to use a down attack on him and show what I had learned. 
charged beat attack. I read that as charged boat attack for a second there. Hold down the A button to charge up your attack. When you have charged your attack to the max, you will unleash a charged beat attack. If a charged beat attack hits an enemy, it will automatically be stunned. Attack an enemy with a charged attack. Right? I wasn't sure that counted. Oh. Oh! Stabbed him right in the dick. It's too late, I've killed your friend and he turned into money and blood. That was a charged one. Suplex. I think that's a Dutch home. God, it's been so long since I looked into that stuff. Charged Slash. Hold down the Y or X button and you will build up power with a beam katana. Release the button at the right time to perform a Charged Slash. Upper Charged Slashes can be unleashed without letting go of the button. That's weird, but okay. The longer you build up the power, the stronger the attack will be. This attack can also hit multiple enemies at once, making it useful when surrounded. There are two types of charge attacks, high and low. A high charge attack can be performed with the Y button, and a low charge attack can be performed with the X button. I should probably mention I'm using uh, an Xbox controller for this game. A high charge attack is strong against enemies in front of you. You cannot move while charging up a high charged attack. After a set period of time, the charged attack will unleash automatically. A low-charged attack is strong against enemies to the side of you. You can move while charging up a low-charged attack. Try attacking enemies with charged attacks. Hey, he's over here. Ah! Fuck me! I, I thought he would just knock him on his ass! Confirmed, I am moving. Good god, man! Oops. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. That's actually not that bad. Oh, that's not what I meant to do, but sure. I really need to stop stabbing them in the dick. This is the end of the tutorial. Oh, this bit right here with the, 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 the checkpoint. If you hit no at any point along the way, by the way, it just skips you straight to that point. So if that was an enormous chore for you, uh, it wasn't mandatory. That's not pipe. What are you holding? Oh, they've got, like, beam katana. That's what they called it, right? So those are beam brass knuckles. You can tell exactly the moment in that sentence, and I remember those are not actually katanas. All right, I can't move, but I can aim it once he actually releases it. For the record, when I walk through that door, I will have officially made it further than I have seen. And you all now know as much as I do about No More Heroes. We are on the same page. Unless you know what that tiger in the corner means, because I don't have the fucking first idea. <laughs> I've never seen a, like, a lightsaber-style weapon with an outer frame like that. You can't stab with it or anything. Hmm. I also would have gone for green over purple, but that's just me. Oh, shit! I didn't even know there was treasure in this game! Okay, looking in corners from now on. Oh, was it which trigger was it? Uh... Ah, yes. Right bumper recenters the camera, except it doesn't do it like any other game I've ever seen, where you can recenter the camera. You know, like Zelda, you hit the trigger and it moves the camera around behind Link. Uh, with this game, it moves the camera behind Travis, 
but instantly using a uh, screen wipe as opposed to physically moving the camera. So that's interesting to me. Haunted door, haunted door. What's up, my dudes? You know, normally when I'm playing a game, I uh, give the enemies a chance, but I don't think this is that kind of hero. Hence the title of the game. Oh, shit! I took off another dude's head with that one. I mean, that guy. There we go. I wanted that guy's head to come off in a non-standard way. Because I thought he was standing in the wrong place. Oh, shit. Never mind that that was a kick he sent forward. Let's drink to celebrate. Or we could go in there. That works, too. Oh. Oh, I thought that was a good little fountain. No, that's a fucking hot tub right in the middle of the room with beds here. Yes. Oh. I do really like this menu. It sort of builds itself as I move along. I go here, and it just says, well, you're not on a job, you dumbass. Everything just sort of assembles itself in front of you. I didn't actually look into this one. Okay. LB dollars. Maybe I live in the island of... La Brea. I like this one the best because, well, that's why all the pixels running in to get in the right position. Well, I guess he just used the trigger to cycle between stages of uh, zoom, I guess. Huh. Well, I don't see any of those things. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. I thought electricity was down by, like, 2%. I was like, oh, does it use that even when I just hit the chests? Uh, right. Just the one room, but I don't go through the one I came in. <laughs> These doors are just painted on. Honestly, the thing that kept me from trying this game back in the day was... Actually, I can't remember if I had a Wii back when this game came out. But the thing that kept me away for so long was the waggle controls. I'm just going to say that. Can I... No, I can't jump. I haven't seen anything with jumping. I was half expecting, like, a dude to come tackling me out of there. It seemed too obvious to run past here. <laughs> Battery plus! Does that mean I get like 101%? No. Fine! Oh, it's not fogged off anymore. Yes. Trading card number one. Is that in here somewhere? So what does back do? Oh no, the timer! Well, I guess there was a lot of tutorializing going on in there. I don't seem to have an inventory, interestingly. Just the options. Well, I can't save the game, but that's okay. You know, I don't think he actually said in the intro cutscene. But I, uh... Before we go on this first episode, I do want to mention, I'm aware that the main character of the game is named Travis Touchdown. I'm informed that he might be some kind of parody of Americans. Is that the best you've got? Wow, that was really good timing. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a Japanese game. I guess that wasn't clear. But, um... I did want to mention before we go that I was pleased to discover that our protagonist, if not our hero, is voiced by Robin Atkin Downs. He's a veteran voice actor. He's been in a ton of stuff. Like, right off the top of my head, the man played the medic in Team Fortress 2. And he played the uh, the Prince of Persia once, although only in Warrior Within. Uh, but I, of course, will always 
think of him as uh, Sean Devlin, the protagonist of an open world game called The Saboteur that was the second game I ever Let's Played, and thus I have a soft spot for it. Mind you, this guy does seem like the sort to stop in the middle of a mission to have a jazz cigarette break, so, uh... <laughs> yeah, you shall see. Before I head down this corridor, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you next time as we continue our voyage with no more heroes. Hopefully we get to meet this... De was it Death Metal? It's a good name for an assassin, I think. Or a good code name, anyway. And we'll see if we really have what it takes to get higher than number 11. Till then. Have yourselves a great day, Burning Dog fans. Later!